In my previous video of this series, I talked about property procedures, specifically how a property procedure can be used to validate incoming data while it's being assigned to the property, like I've done here with this date of birth. In this video, I'm going to talk about methods. Methods are actions which can be carried out by an object or things that can be done to an object, so they're sometimes referred to as behaviours and sometimes as operations. I prefer the term method because that's what most programming documentation refers to them as. First of all, I'm going to show you how to implement a method as a procedure. Then I'll show you that there's some wisdom in implementing the same method as a function. In a later video, I'll talk about method overloading. I'm going to write a method to save the property values of an object created from this class into a text file. I'll call the method save details. The file name is going to be constructed using the initials of this person. I'm going to save the file into the My Documents folder of the user who's running the program. So, ST Full Path contains the full path and file name of the file that this program is going to create. And now to write the property values into a text file. This command wants the full path, and then the data I'm going to write into the file. I'm throwing a line break after each piece of data there. The final parameter of this command specifies whether I want to overwrite an existing file or append data to it. I'm going to go with overwriting an existing file. So there's my method, written as a procedure. Let's give that a go. I'll build it first of all. I've already got my front-end application running in a separate instance of Visual Studio. So we'll switch to that and we'll put in a method call. There it is, save details. And there were no error messages, so I presume that's worked. Let's have a quick check to see if we have a new file. Here's a new file inside my My Documents folder. It's called kd.txt. If I take a look inside it, there are the property values of that person object. That's worked fine. Now, as I said before, there's some wisdom in implementing your methods as functions rather than procedures. By definition, a procedure will carry out a set of actions, which is exactly what this method is doing. But a function can do that and it can return a value to its caller. I'm going to rewrite this as a function. And it's going to return a Boolean true or a Boolean false. The critical line of code in here is where I attempt to write the file to disk. I'm going to put this inside a try-catch block. Now, if this line of code triggers a runtime error, otherwise known as an exception, then I can catch it and replace it with something else. If there's a problem, I'm going to return a Boolean false. If, on the other hand, the line succeeds, I'll return true. So there it is, a modified version of my save details function. Let's rebuild that and try it again. Now I need to change the way I call it 
to test the return value from the function. So I'll say if p.savedetails equals true, an appropriate message, else an alternative message. Let's give it another go. Success. Now I'd like to point out at this stage that a programmer can make use of class code without actually knowing how the class code was written. I could have been supplied the class library as a compiled DLL file. I can still call this method, but I might be completely unaware of what's going on behind the scenes. For all I know, the details are being saved into a database, or maybe they're being emailed off to somebody. I call the method, and I get a message back saying that it's succeeded. Arguably, that's all some programmers need to know. This is one of the fundamental concepts of object-oriented programming. It's called encapsulation. Encapsulation means that the code and the data within a class are bound together and they're protected from outside interference. Encapsulation is sometimes referred to as data hiding. To be more precise, it's complexity hiding. Think of this, you don't need to know how a car works in order to drive it. It's the same principle here. I don't really need to know how the save details method is implemented. I can still call it. I can still use it.